40 percent of Americans say the health care reform law should be repealed. That, that's down from 45 percent in November. A move by House Republicans to repeal the law is going nowhere. Even so, they passed a resolution today directing House committees to get to work on new health reform legislation. The vote was 253 to 175 with 14 Democrats joining the majority. In the meantime, the reform plan the president signed into law last year is starting to kick in. Where do things stand? Tonight, we put that in focus. We went to the Los Angeles Forum. We got there very early in the morning, around 2.30, 3 o'clock, and already there was a line of people. The point of the event was to provide free medical care to people in need. In all, more than 5,000. We are done. Yeah. Ten months after the Affordable Care Act became law, many Americans still rely on charity like this. Implementing reform is just beginning. It was shocking. It was shocking to see that many people needing that level of care. I think the best way to understand the health reform package is that it is not a recipe for everything that's to be done, but is in fact a toolbox. Atul Gawande is a surgeon at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston and an influential voice on health care policy. This is a rollout that doesn't even begin to produce insurance for people for three years. The key date is 2014. That's when every American not covered by employers must buy health insurance or pay a fine. This larger pool of insured Americans is essential to pay for the most ill and expensive patients. For the next three years, 17 of every 100 Americans will remain uninsured. That number should drop to nine in 2014. This is a long process. A process that requires turning a 900-page law that few people have actually read into a better health care system. The job of implementing health care reform belongs to HHS, the Department of Health and Human Services, and they have an entire new division now to do that. The concrete building on Independence Avenue is where the new coverage rules are being defined. There is a special interest lobbying frenzy going on right now over the definition of one word, essential. Is obesity treatment, is that, uh, is that essential? Infertility treatment? As the government sorts out those questions, Americans are still trying to figure out what the law means to them. In our latest poll, 56% say the law has not been explained well. Just 13% say they have seen any benefit, even though the most vulnerable are now protected. Children cannot be denied insurance because of a pre-existing condition. At no age can an insurance company cancel your insurance because you get sick. And children can be covered under their parents' policies up until the age of 26. A gap in Medicare coverage for drug costs is being closed. And experimental programs to reward doctors for better efficiency and outcomes are underway. Are you having any difficulty breathing? But it will take six more years to phase in all 91 of the law's major components. And that's why the White House has its entire war room operation up and going again. They understand that part one was getting it passed. Part two is protecting it. The law is vulnerable because of the complex way it tries to fold 30 million uninsured people into the system while getting a handle on costs. By 2019, the law is expected to save the economy $143 billion. But the country's health care tab at that point will still reach $4.6 trillion, or 20 percent of the economy. That's compared to 17 percent now. This law does more to address coverage than it does to address cost. And businesses' argument for years has been the problem is cost, and that's what's killing our economy. Recently, the largest insurer in California, Blue Shield, announced that it was raising its uh, premiums once again. Californians are not the only ones still being battered with jaw-dropping hikes. Many, many people thought that uh, health care reform was going to stop these kinds of, of increases. Republican leaders are making sure that doesn't go unnoticed. We will continue this fight until Obamacare is no longer the law of the land. One congressional expert that I spoke to put it this way. He said, they're not going to be able to kill this bill. The best they can do right now is a series of flesh wounds. That damage could be inflicted by choking off funding for programs that support the law. But a greater threat is the legal storm that's brewing.
the future of health care reform could well hinge on legal issues, not political ones. More than 20 states are now suing the federal government over the rule that makes insurance coverage mandatory. They say Congress simply exceeded its authority when it passed this wide-ranging law because it requires residents of all these states to actually buy insurance or face a tax. Court rulings in favor of the states may cripple reform. So that storm is going to get stronger and build and build. It's going to get to the appeals course. And eventually, with, I think, the full force of a hurricane, it's going to hit the United States Supreme Court. I have no question that we will discover ways that can control costs, improve quality of care for people. Right, you inherit. Whether we're going to take those lessons uh, depends entirely on politics, and that's scary. That's the reality.